Great rising, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I know it's been a minute. We got so much to say. I had to, oh my goodness. Every day is a journey. Every day is, for me anyway, I learn something new. So, um, I haven't made a video probably all month because my mom got ill and um, I was with her um, in the hospital, in the rehab facility, and at home. She is doing much better. Thank you everyone for your prayers. Um, but I tell you, I learned something and I'm so thankful and grateful that my mom, Mary Staples, is getting better. She had a, I'm not going to say why she was sick, but just know that she was sick and she is tremendously better and getting better every day with support, which sidebar, I will be unveiling my program uh, wellness partners next week it will be the second time that um, my organization has been um, has wrote the the funding for it and we received it again from a different um, organization but I can't talk specifically today but I will reveal the details next week so thus is the prelude to where we're going so as you know I had a stroke four and a half years ago my mother is a stroke survivor my brother my younger brother Joseph is a stroke survivor we had all three had strokes, different strokes, different times, and affected the stroke affected us differently. And with me, my left side of my brain was um, affected, which means the right side of my body is affected. And I have aphasia, so sometimes I can't get my work out, my words out. And especially at times where I'm exhausted and tired, which I have been this past month. But when my mother got sick, there was no conversation between my brother, Joseph, about who was going to do what for her. What I did know is that I wasn't going to let my mother be in the hospital by herself. Support is 85 percent of your recovery and i know that my brother works during the day and because i'm in recovery and retired now it was no it was a no-brainer to me so we'd never discuss who was gonna take up what role and i'm so glad we were able to do so because what I realized from uh, my mother's hospitalization and compared to when I had my stroke, because we don't think about it when we're feeling well, but we need to really think about who has access to your health information. Now, most hospitals are on my chart, but some of the information is incorrect and if you're in the hospital by yourself and if you are incapacitated and can't advocate or speak up for yourself they're trying they will do whatever you know and i was thinking like we need to know what type of medicines my mother is on what we need to know what medicine she's allergic to things that we don't necessarily have a 
conversation about. Um, Because I didn't want them just giving her anything and I wasn't going to leave her alone. And we are in the era of viruses. So, and, and we are very particular, or at least I am, about what enters the body. So, um, I, I actually had access to her medicines. So, I was able to give the information to um, the medical staff to correct what they had on her my chart because um, in previous visits, they tried to give her insulin. My mother is not a diabetic, so they can make mistakes. These medical facilities, medical practitioners are humans. They make mistakes. And also, um, sometimes when you're in certain facilities, if you don't have constant round the clock visited, visitors or someone to be with you some of the staff will ignore the patient i've seen it especially when i was recovering so we spent probably three weeks in the hospital two and a half hours at a local uh, rehabilitation uh, center because off the bat they were not attentive now mind you i know we're in a COVID era and many hospitals and rehab centers and nursing homes are short of staff but they ain't short of the money so where's the money you get what you pay for if, if a patient is paying a high dollar amount for rehab, um, for a rehab institution or a nursing home or something, or the insurance is being, is being billed, the, the staff should be, um, uh, should be concept, um, the, the, Staff should be paid accordingly, not underpaid, not overworked, because the staff takes care of the patients. And I had, we had a very negative interaction with a rehab facility here in Cincinnati that I took my mother out. I'm like, no, that, <laughs> that day, my aphasia was perfect i'm like i am not leaving my mother here point two make sure you have some type of living will or something um something in writing that you can email copy on paper email to yourself email to at least three people who are close to you who can get this information to the medical facilities of what you can and cannot or what you do and do not want what you can eat what you don't eat yada 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 because if you don't they give you whatever be proactive about your health but also be proactive when it comes to having something medically necessary to happen. Having wellness partners, having partners, having people that care about you, having people who support you. You don't have to spread it to the whole world, but have at least three people know where to get the emergency information from you type it out email it to them make copies of it and let them know where the copies are in case they lose the email it's very important because western medicine is not like it used to be it's not humble and a lot of people 
there are some people who really love what they do but some people just are doing things because it's a job or they're just so overworked that they can't do their jobs properly so be proactive and be there for your people if they have to be hospitalized make sure if you can't be there every day 24 7 around the clock make sure y'all can have staff or somebody family members or friends take turns to be with them because i'm telling you the people who have constant visitors are the people that are best taken care of because they don't want anything negative being said about their facility or their staff. When you have family members or loved ones are in the hospital and nobody comes to see them, they have no advocate, nobody to advocate for them. And I've seen it when I was, um, when I was incarcerated, <laughs> it seems like incarceration, but it wasn't. When I was in the hospital, nobody was coming to see uh, some of my uh, roommates and they were ignored by the staff. The th same thing um, at this time when my mom was in the hospital. Now, now that she's out, she's having um, home health care, but I still have to be there with her because she's still getting better. She's not strong enough yet. But at the same time, when you have home care staff coming to the home, if nobody is there with the patient, that's the same thing. They'll do and say anything. You don't know. You know, um, these sometimes, I don't know what's going on with the world, but just love on your loved ones take care of them i had no idea neither did my brother uh have anything in writing about who was going to do what and i didn't it, it was like automatic i didn't even think about it i knew i had to be there he knew he knew what he had to do and it all synced but sometimes when you don't have anyone you you have to do it alone if you don't have anyone to advocate for you if you can't speak you can't talk get into a community i don't care if it's your ymca community your you know your civic um affiliations your churches whatever get a community get with people who care about you who care about your well-being, who you can trust, and who will be your partner to help you get better. Because like I said, 85% of your recovery has to do with your positive mindset. You can't have a positive mindset. You get all this negative stuff going on around you. Be around positive people. Be around people who love you and make sure you communicate. I know people don't like other people in their business, but make sure you communicate the importance about your health care, your recovery, what your wellness to someone else, not just verbally, have it written down. Write it down, save it on your computer or your tablet or your phone, send a copy to at least three people who you trust that will be there in your support in case you have to be um, in the hospital for your medical care. Um, look into a living will. People don't like to talk about wills, dead wills, living wills, but it's very important. It's very important about your care. You don't want to be a guinea pig. and a lot when it comes to western medicine unfortunately they use people as living guinea pigs so i hope that makes sense um to somebody i hope it helped you today um now i'm you can't pull out of a pull 
pour out of an empty vessel. And I am very tired and exhausted. But I got to get my strength up so I can get back on to my program of uh, my wellness program. Um, but, but one thing I do know, you have to improvise at times too. Because all the while I was not able to uh, tune in to my virtual programmings and my uh you go to the why i did walk through the hallways of the facilities and walk when i got my mom home just walk around the house to give me some exercise to put my feet in the in the soil to ground to stretch yoga tai chi all those things help helps to keep a positive mindset helps to keep your body strong and strengthening but make sure you take care of yourself because you cannot pour out of a empty vessel if you're not feeling well you can't take care of anybody else and vice versa you can't even take care of yourself so take care of yourself eat healthy and well stay hydrated Keep your mind on a positive note, a positive say, a positive mindset. Keep positive people, positive things around you. So that's my spiel for today. Until next week, till I announce a beautiful gift. Oh, let me not forget. I received a grant from Comeback Connection this year who helped me tremendously two years ago and i put in another grant for help with something else and i did receive that grant as well so i'm just so thankful and so grateful for come back connection um here in cincinnati um i'm so thankful and grateful for love for life for my mother and for my brother so take care i hope all is well all will be well my name is trezana staples i had a stroke i am a stroke survivor i am a phoenix rising peace love and light